intro music. Yeah! Woohoo! Welcome back to the channel, Star Trek Fleet Command fans, where today I want to talk about XP, specifically farming for not officer XP, but ship XP. Now, this is a process that is a little bit difficult, and actually, it's something that we have another content creator who handled today. I actually want to give them a shout out for it because they put out their video earlier. And I'm going to blame it on the fact that they're in the UK. So if y'all didn't know, my friend Loop, he actually works with Stewie. If y'all don't know who this combo is, they created and managed the officer tool, which is a spreadsheet so many of y'all use and that we have covered and really, you know, pushed forward back in the day and is still in operation as an absolutely fantastic tool. So I did watch part of his video to make sure that we didn't cover everything the same thing, but I do encourage you to check out his content if you haven't already. And I always love to give love to our other content creators, especially in other parts of the globe, because gaming experiences are different. In this video, I want to cover whether you're a new player or experienced player, veteran player, or whatever, where you can grind XP. And this is becoming more and more important with more and more ships rolling out. I mean, we've got the Voyager out now and the Cerritos and the Titan and you have all these special ships. Well, they all need XP and to get what you need, you're going to have to find ways to go out and grind it. So the easy answer to manually grind for XP is to go manually hit hostiles as in you actively take a warship out and then you go find a system. Let's just say a freebooter and you go attack that ship for XP. Now, I don't think I have a ship besides the Intrepid, which is currently auto grinding. We'll talk about that in a second. That needs any, but let's just see if we can find one real quick. You see, I've, I keep a lot of my ships up there. Okay, so we've got an Antares. Let's just assign this Antares for the heck of it. And let's send it out to a space that I actually do a lot of farming or, or did a lot of farming in, depending on what account I'm on and what level I'm on. I'm going to go out here. Now, I'm not running an optimal cruise. So I'm just going to go out and send it there as an example and it only takes a minute to get there. But you want to actively hit a hostile, and when you do that, you're going to see your XP meter jump. Now, we'll go ahead and warn you that as has been kind of a theme lately, uh, and you can just go to all of the discords to find that theme being discussed ad nauseum, there's been a lot of bugs and display issues lately. So what you might find is it maybe doesn't display correctly, but let me go ahead and tell you it is working. So we're coming to the system, and you see I need XP to go from level to level. And the active way to get this is to actually go out and get a ship with it. But there are also inactive ways that you can do this. And there are three main inactive ways. But first, let's talk about the active ways and maybe where the most advantageous places to grind are. Generally speaking, the exchange transports or the Eclipse hostiles are the top places to go for a lot of players for grinding XP. They just seem to pay out decent amounts. And you have a lot of players who are able to use this as a successful method to get XP for their ships and grind them out actively. This is one of those areas. As you saw, my Antares just got 1,700 XP, which brings us closer to the really ridiculously high number that we need. For newer players in the game, one area that we always recommend grinding in is the early Separatist system. So an example of the Separatist system will be Kabi. Now, these early Separatist systems have got the Separatist Hostiles, which paid out a pretty nice amount of XP. And for some reason, we've got a weird cluster of friends here. This is weird. What's going on here, guys? This wasn't planned. It was being recorded live, and it just happened. What, what's going on here? Anyway, there's a random North Cut, Saladin, and Augur in this system. But anyway... You've got this system that for lower level players is very common. And then as you level up, you're going to find players using these systems, the exchange systems, all the way up to Crawford, Cheyenne, and Laramie. And then eventually people actually go all the way out to the deep space areas and will grind against the Belosian traders. So if you want to actively get your XP up, you have to actively go and hit ships. Now let's talk about the alternative ways that you can do this. Technically, you can buy ship xp yes it is doable yes it is possible and you any chart to prove it now the value of this really varies so if you want to purchase it with latinum is one of the few things that lat can actually be used on in my opinion that is useful you see you can do it for ship xp and officer xp now it depends on how much you need so like if you're in an early level let's say you're at level five so my intrepid right now is currently auto grinding and you see that it might only need 7,000. Well, you can see it's actually less efficient to 
to do it at that mark, it costs more. Whereas if you have to spend in 10,000 or greater bunches, you're going to get more in return. Now, you notice that my Intrepid, um, sorry, I didn't have it on the screen, but my Intrepid shows five out of 10 there. And you will notice that I need 7,000 XP. So it actually costs me more to upgrade my Intrepid than if it needed 10,000 or more. So you're getting 50 XP to one Latinum at 10,000 or more, or it varies if you have less than that. So even if you are going to maybe purchase your XP, you might want to wait until you get a ship up to a couple of tiers where starting around tier three, you're actually going to get in bigger bunches. Instead of wasting some Latinum on a much lower value, you're going to see that progressively scale a little bit higher. So like after this docks, Right now, you're going to see we're going to hit repair. You can see we maxed out our level there. And um, sometimes, again, this was that display issue I was showing where it showed 5 out of 10, but it was actually done. You're going to want to then go through your upgrade process. And I'm not because it costs uncommon. We're going to save that for a leaderboard. But anyway, you can now see the actual cost and the benefits. So you can purchase it with Latinum. The easiest way to get Latinum is the game is through events and by doing away teams generally you're going to have a latin mission ongoing at all times you can see i've got three missions right now that have a critical payout of latinum scientific breakthrough being one that i'm running right now with only a 10 percent chance these are ways that you can kind of get the latinum that you need to upgrade your ships if you choose to go that route now i'm not telling you to go that route because i know latinum can use for a lot of different things and if you're curious of a generalized cost of what it's going to run you if you decide to do this well, if you're in a G2 ship, it's going to run you about 2,000 Latinum to max it out if you just want to skip that entire process. Just like say, screw it. I don't actually want to do any of the upgrading or manual grinding or even passive grinding. I just want to have it right now. Well, if you want it right now, right now is going to cost you. So let me put up on the screen what that ends up looking like. Thank you again to Jules for putting this together. But at the top right of your screen, the G3 ship is going to run you about 51,000. G4 is going to start costing you in the millions. And G5, 7.4 million Latinum to go ahead and max it out. So that is the way to purchase Latinum. The way to get Latinum in terms of as a passive way, there are a few different ways. One, there are away team missions that pay it out. For example, Tactical Simulator, which you'll see is part of my reward right here. So if I was to fill this out with defensive officers, Marcus being a big one, let's just put... For the sake of it, Miles O'Brien up there, though I would never waste Miles O'Brien. Yeah, I get 66,000 for this mission just based on where my multipliers are at, which is my officer stats, etc. So I'm able to get a decent amount there. Just not a ton, but a decent amount. And then there are other passive ways, which is passively grinding in space because this is now a fixed feature. This has been around for a long time, but it wasn't working for a long time. It was broken, which, shocker, Scopely had something broken. Very similar to how our Q's Trials and Forbidden Tech was broken. Just wanted an excuse to ring that bell again. Now, anytime that you are disliked by a faction like Federation, Klingon, or Romulan, you can auto grind in those systems. But what if you're like me and you've already gone respected and etc. with all three factions, as in they like you. The one space that you can still auto grind in is right here, augment space. Now, there's some confusion from a lot of players as they don't understand why that works. You have a positive rep. So augments are bad guys. They, 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 you're not liked by anybody. So well, when you get more and more liked with them, you have bounty hunters that chase you for being allied to the augments. So what you're going to start seeing is lots of players sitting here auto grinding because this has been fixed. Now, what had happened before is there was a limit on how many of these could spawn Thus, if too many people were there or somebody would come into the system, it would interrupt that error uh, or cause an error where they would no longer spawn for you. So maybe you got six hostiles that hit you. Maybe you got 10 and then it was done. Now that has been fixed by Scopely. So a shout out to the overlords, a positive. We got to give love for positive. When positives happen, we like positive. So thank you for the positive fix. Now you can actually sit down and auto grind through the night. This is a big deal. This now allows you as a free-to-play player or just a player who doesn't want to waste their Latinum to get some levels throughout the night and level up. Now, the drawback will be you're still going to have to tear up your ship. It's not going to auto-tear for you. But as you spawn in, you're going to get the trespassing warning and bounty hunters are going to start coming after you. 
So you're going to see more and more players using the borders of the system. Hopefully, videos like myself and Lube don't break the game because now everybody uses this technique again. For a long time, people had stopped. And hopefully, this doesn't cause the thing to break as it did previously. Oh, I can't wait for the comments to say, Rev, why do you say these things? Why do you make videos? This is just going to cause more problems. But this has been adjusted already as a quality of life update. Why was not rigorously discussed? Who knows? But I think this is a good change and gives you, the player, the opportunity to grind out what is one of the bigger pain points. I mean, for example, the Stella grind. We always talk about needing to max and scrap Stella so that you can get through the outlaw tree. Well, you don't know. That costs a freaking lot of, I mean... You remember what we just said? Do I need to put it back on the screen? I'm gonna put it back on the screen. I'm gonna put it back. Remember, cost. That's a G3 ship. You need over 50,000 Latinum just to keep running that thing. That's assuming you're you're maxing it out. That's a problem. Right? That's a pain point. You don't just have 50,000 Latinum for 20 Stellas. Because mathematically, what do we just spend? Like a million Latinum? Not everybody has that just laying around. So the more efficient that we can be, the better we can typically be. And this now allows you to auto grind now again you can do this with other factions if the romulans dislike you you can auto grind a romulan space but one place that everybody should be able to do this new player old player augment space and now that it's working properly again you can get your levels on if you enjoy this video make sure you give it a like that actually does help out tremendously believe it or not the like button is actually a big deal but if you have any questions about how all this works and how that works and this works and that works and everything else comment section down below hope this does help you out hope you get your voyager ground up your cerritos your titan especially those ships that you don't use very often those mining ships because remember the big thing and lou hit this at the beginning of his video every ship has got a ship ability that ship ability improves when you level up not tear up level up so you do want to level it up for your miners that means you're getting a better mining laser on your fecia or on your antares or on your hydra etc so hope this video helps you out live long and plunder stay safe for the space cowboys deuces that's me catch you on the next one i'm out love y'all i really do y'all are amazing an even better outro than the intro for the empire and glory to your house